What's up guys? This is Brent with Western Equipment and in this video I'm going to be showing you everything you need to know about the John Deere X394. First, let's talk about model number and what makes the X394 special to the X300 series. So starting here with the model number, we have our X to start with. Now this is gonna indicate that this is an X series mower. Now within the John Deere lineup, we have X300s, X500s, and X700s all in the tractor style mower lineup. Now as we move up here, we have the three. So this is gonna indicate that series like I was just talking about. So this is going to be the initial series in the X lineup. Now below the X lineup, we also have the S200s, and the S100s. So the X3 is gonna kind of be right there in the middle of all of the lineups of mowers. So then next we have the nine. This is gonna be what we call our model indicator. This is gonna kind of put the mower within the X300 series of what type of features and functions it's gonna have. And then our last number here is gonna be a four. And this is gonna indicate that this model is a four wheel steer. Now what you'll also see in the X300 lineup is a zero at the end here. And this is going to indicate that it is a two wheel steer. So the two main things or the three main things rather that make the X394 special is for one, it is going to be the largest mower and most decked out mower in the X300 class. So the X394 is going to have hydraulic power steering, which I'll show more here in a minute. It is going to have a hydraulic deck lift. And it's also going to have the four wheel steer. Next, let's go ahead and get underneath the hood here and talk about the engine. So what we're gonna have here is a 23 horsepower Kawasaki engine. So this is going to be branded John Deere here on the top, but you will also see a sticker right back here on the back of the engine that will make sure and confirm with you that this is a Kawasaki engine. So within these John Deere mowers, you're going to have either a Kawasaki or a Briggs and Stratton engine, but you do have the Kawasaki here on the 394. Now, some of the service points that we need to keep in mind, one you can see really easily, which is gonna be right here. This is our oil fill. Right below that is going to be our oil filter. Now, keep in mind also here on the oil fill, that this is also going to be where our oil dipstick is so that we can check that level. Now, if we move around the side of the engine here, we are going to see one of our spark plugs right here at the front. Now, keep in mind, this is a V-twin engine, so you will have two spark plugs and you'll have one over here on the other side. Then right here at the front of the engine, if we pop this cover, we are going to have our air filter. And then over here on the left hand side, we will have that fuel pump. Now this is important to know where this is at because sometimes when we have fuel issues, the easiest fix on these machines is swapping out this fuel pump here. And then right back behind the engine, we're going to have our fuel filter situated right here. And then of course we are going to have our battery. So very easy access to all of these maintenance points, these engine maintenance points and our battery right here underneath the hood. Now also right here on the hood, we're gonna have a periodic maintenance chart. This is gonna show us all of our different service intervals, when to change those things, some important points on the mower, and additional information as well on the daily service that needs to be done on these mowers. Next, let's talk about our operator station as this is where we are going to be spending all of our time on this machine. And the first thing that I would point out is the seat here, guys. Very comfortable 18 inch high back seat here with the cut and sewn cover that can be easily removed. We can simply pop these tabs off, change this cover if we start to see any rips and tears and go ahead and get a new one put on this seat which is going to add to the life and longevity of your seats. Now you're also going to be able to add armrests to this seat. So you're going to notice some holes over here on the side that are going to be pre-drilled and ready for screws to go in so you can add that armrest kit, which is just going to add to the comfortability of this mower. Also on this seat, it is going to be adjustable fore and aft here. And then you're also going to have spring suspension underneath the seat to make sure and give for that comfortable ride. Now, along with those comfortability features, you're also going to have a tilt steering wheel here on the X394. So you have multiple positions here to be able to fit multiple different sizes of riders. Now, if we look at our controls over here on the left-hand side, the first thing that we're going to see is our throttle and choke lever. So you'll notice here that the choke is on a spring. So whenever you push it up and release, 
it will come back. So whenever we're starting this mower, we'd put it maybe up into mid throttle, then hold our choke and then go ahead and start the mower on that cold start. And once we get it started, we can let off and that choke will immediately go back down. Now, right below that, we are going to have this yellow button here, which doesn't have any indication up on the dash of what this is, but this is our RIO button. This is what we're going to use whenever we need to go in reverse with our blade still running. So how this feature works is if we're going along, we have our blades running and we need to go in reverse and keep those blades running. We need to push this button first, start our rear descent, and then we can let off of that button, continue to go in reverse and cut what we need to cut. And then once we go start going back forward, it releases that RIO feature. So if we needed to go back in reverse and cut again, we'd need to push this button again, hit our reverse to start our rear descent, and then that will keep the blades on. Now this is a safety feature to make sure that we're not backing up, running over things with those blades going. It makes you mindful that you are, that you do have your blades on while going in reverse and makes you make sure to hit that button. Now, right below that is going to be our mower deck lift. So like I said, it is hydraulic. So if we turn the mower on here and I were to raise up or down on this switch, just like that, you're gonna notice that whenever I push down, it lowers that mower deck. And then to raise it back up, I would need to start the mower. Now this is going to activate the hydraulics on this mower. So then I can raise the deck up. So then I would choose my height here. And then whenever I push down on the lower, it's gonna lower that down to that height. And then to raise up, I'm simply gonna raise up just like that. Now over here to the right, like you just saw, I do have my key switch here. This is gonna have a lights position and then it will have an on position. And then you're also going to have, of course, your start all the way to the right. Right below that, we are gonna have our PTO switch. So right here is where we would pull out to turn the blades on, push them in to turn them off. Right below that, we will have our cruise control button. So once we get to that speed that we wanna be at, we would simply hit this button just like we would on most of our cars. It's going to lock this mower into speed and then to either get out of that to get out of that cruise control feature, we have a brake over here on the right-hand side that we can push, or we can simply hit our reverse button and that will also disengage the cruise control feature. Now, right next to that, we are gonna have our parking brake. So this is on a lever system along with this pedal. So if I wanted to release that parking brake, I would simply push in here on the pedal, push down on the lever, and then that is going to release that parking brake. And now once that's done, this can be used as an actual brake whenever you are driving this mower. But to set that parking brake, we're gonna simply push in, raise up, and that is going to lock us into park. Now, right below me here in the operator station is where we're gonna have an information sticker all the way around our deck height. So to choose our deck height right here, as you can see, we have one all the way up to four inch, and this is gonna be in quarter inch increments. So we can simply choose that height and then use our lever over here on the left to raise or lower that deck to that position. Now, right here in the middle on our display panel, this is a very nice display panel on the X300 series. What you're going to have here is over to the left, we're going to have our mowing speed here. This is gonna tell us how fast our blades are spinning. And once we are at the revolutions we need to be in up here in the green by raising our throttle, that is gonna indicate when we're good to go ahead and cut grass. Right here in the middle, we are gonna have a fuel indicator, which is nice. We don't have to be looking for that visual sight gauge here. We have it electronically right here on the screen in the middle. To the right of that, we can see that we have that P. It is gonna indicate that we are in park. It'll also have some other service lights that'll come up around the fuel gauge here if we happen to have issues. We do have our hour meter, which is right here live, and we also have our battery voltage meter. Now also right over here on the right-hand side is going to be our hydrostatic drive pedals. This is gonna be that two-touch pedal system where we have one for forward, one for reverse, making operating this machine super easy for anybody to operate. Very simply labeled out here, forward, reverse, so once we get this mower going, turned on to move this mower, it's as simple as these two right here. So now let's talk a little bit about the rear of this machine. First of all, right back here on your left-hand side is going to be your fuel opening. Now this is gonna be a very wide three inch opening here with the tethered lid, so you cannot lose that. And this is going to have a 3.2 gallon tank on it. 
So typically what we like to see is about a gallon an hour. So you're looking at about three hours of mowing here, but that also depends on the conditions, of course, that you're mowing in. Next, we're going to have our transmission release right here in the middle. So what this is going to do once we pull that loose is that is going to unlock those transaxles. That way, if you absolutely need to, you can relieve the parking brake, pull this lever, and then push this machine if we have to. We're also going to have a tow hitch right here in the middle so you can hook up all of those rear implements that you may be looking into, such as a sprayer, thatcher, whatever those different things are, you can hook those up right here. And then over to the right next to our operator seat, we will have a cup holder there in the front and also a storage cubby. Now let's get into talking about the thing that most of you are probably looking at, which is these rods right here. These are going to be our draft arms here at the rear for or our steering linkage rather back here for our four wheel steer. And as you can see, I have this machine right now turned all the way to the right so you can see just how much these rear wheels turn to give you that four wheel steer, almost like a zero turn type steering feature. Now also right back here, you'll notice that we do have our reservoir here for our transaxle fluid. So you can check the fluid of these transaxles and the hydraulics for the hydraulic power steering and that hydraulic lift. We wanna make sure and be checking on this reservoir right here. So now that I've talked about the four wheel steer and the power steering. I'm gonna go ahead and hop on here and show you just how easy it is to maneuver this machine. So right there, we've got it running. I'm gonna take off my parking brake and I'm already all the way turned to the right. So I'm gonna go ahead and back up. Go ahead and make a full circle. Right here within the camera space, I can do a complete figure eight. Without having to back up. And like I said, guys, with that power steering, I can literally drive this thing with one finger. So if I came up closer to you, you can see here just how easy it is to drive this mower. And now you'll notice that I'm in a very confined space here in the barn. I'm not out in the open and I am able to drive and maneuver this thing so easy. Next, let's talk about the mower deck on this machine. So what we're going to have here is going to be an XL Deep 48 inch mower deck. And so this will be the only mower deck that will come on the X394. Now with other X300 models, you can switch out deck sizes, usually ranging between 42 and up to 54. But in the X394, because of its four wheel steer feature, and the way these wheels have to turn and all the other things that are on this machine, the 48 inch deck is the only option that you're going to get. Some things about this deck that you'll see is you are going to have the extra rub rails here on the side to help with that wear and tear over here on our edging side. We are going to have the anti-scalping wheels that are easily adjustable with a pin. They're also gonna rotate from side to side, which will make taking your deck off a lot easier. You're going to have these on our all four corners, and you'll also have the anti-scalping rollers right there in the middle of the deck. Now you'll also see that here that you have a washout port. This is gonna be great for cleaning the underside of this deck. What you would do is hook up your water hose, make sure that you're on an asphalt or concrete surface, set this deck all the way down on the ground, turn that water on and then turn your blades on. And that's gonna get that water churning and clean out any of that debris and buildup that you have underneath that deck. And then once you're done, go ahead and turn that water off, leave those blades on, let it dry, make sure that we don't happen to have any wetness left underneath the deck whenever we're done cleaning. Now, talking about debris and buildup, one thing I always like to talk about on these decks is that they are going to be a stamped steel deck. So what you're going to have here is a full sheet of stamped steel with no weld spots within the inside of the deck. So therefore you're not gonna have any corners. Everything is gonna be rounded here. And what that's going to do is allow for more airflow, better airflow and disbursement of material and also no corners and welded spots for material to clump up and build up because whenever we have that we have those corners we get material that clumps up builds up there it's also going to allow moisture to stay inside that deck possibly cause rust spots and without having those welded welded spots on the deck 
you are eliminating the chances of that happening. Now also as far as features on this deck, you are gonna have the flip up spindle covers and they are going to tell you right on top here, use air, not water. So whenever we're cleaning off the top of this deck, we do wanna make sure that we're taking a blower or an air hose and blowing this thing off because the less water on the mower, the better. As you see here, we do have our pulleys and belt and our spindles here that are going to be exposed. So we don't wanna have water on those to happen to accidentally cause any damage to the components of this mower. So we want to use air as much as possible. It's also gonna tell you right here on top where your grease point is. So it is gonna give you the grease gun with an arrow. So our grease point would be right underneath here on this spindle. You will have one in the middle and then also one over on the right hand side. Now, the only thing different that we're gonna see over here on the right hand side is that we do have a large discharge opening and we also are going to have our discharge chute, which is also spring loaded to make sure that if you happen to run into anything there that is going to flip up flip back down and stay in place. And we wanna make sure that whenever we're running these mowers, guys, that we are leaving that discharge chute on. That is not only a protectant for people around you, but also for yourself, for any of that material that may be flying out, the wind could be blowing in it, trying to come back on you. If we have that discharge chute on, we're eliminating some of that. So make sure that we're keeping that in place. And then, like I said, also on that right hand spindle, we are going to have the same thing, a flip up cover here with an indicator for the air, not water, and also an indicator for where our grease points are. Now, one thing that I always talk about on lawnmower decks is the importance of making sure that our deck is level. So the nice thing about the X394 is that right underneath the seat here, you are going to have the tool that you're going to need to level this deck. And you're also going to have the gauge that you need right here on board. Now, make sure to be checking on our other channel 24 seven parts, as I will show you exactly how to use these tools, but just make sure and know that they are right here underneath your seat where you can easily access those and be able to level that deck at any time and have the tools right here on board to do so. And last but not least, let's talk a little bit about some specs and dimensions of this machine and also cover warranty. So as far as dimensions, we are going to be 49 inches high at the top of the seat here, uh, overall length of 74 inches. And overall width with the mower deck and the discharge chute down, we're gonna be at 62.6. With that discharge chute lifted up, we're gonna be at 52.6. Then we're gonna come at in at an overall weight of 755 pounds. Now, some of the specs also with this machine, we're looking at a top travel speed of 6.2 mile an hour going forward and 3.5 mile an hour going in reverse. Also on the deck here, this is going to be 10 gauge steel. So it is going to be a heavy steel deck. Our frame is going to be a welded steel frame. You're not gonna see bolted together pieces on this frame. This is going to be a heavy, welded frame all the way underneath this machine to make sure and add to that life and longevity of this mower. Now, as far as warranty goes, what you're gonna be looking at is a bumper to bumper four year, 300 hour warranty. So that's going to be whether you get to the four year mark or the 300 hour mark, whichever one comes first, that is gonna be bumper to bumper. Now, of course, this is going to exclude some things such as normal wear and tear items, such as belts, blades, batteries, different things like that. But for the most part, all of your engine components, your, transa your transaxle components, and everything in between is going to be covered under that warranty. Just make sure to check with your dealer with any of those questions about the specific piece that you are looking at. So guys, I hope this video was helpful. I hope you liked this video. If you did, just make sure and hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And also guys, if you're looking for any parts for your John Deere equipment, make sure to go check us out at 247parts.com. And as always guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, make sure to check out this cool video and this one. Buy your parts right up here and subscribe right here.